Hello students, I am Kya Shilata, Department of English, STM Degree College, Hanawa. In this video lesson, I am dealing with the second topic of first unit of BA third semester optional English paper that is Poets of Romantic Period. In my previous class, I have talked in detail about the features of Romantic Age. And now I am moving to the next step of it that is the Poets of Romantic Period. We have seen the publication of Lyrical Ballads in 1798 which marks the beginning of the Romantic Age and it was published jointly by the two great writers of Romantic Period William Wordsworth and S.T. Coleridge. And now we are studying about all the great or the major poets of Romantic period. The poets of Romantic period have been divided into two categories. The first generation poets and the second generation poets. Okay. The poets have been divided into two categories. First generation poets and second generation poets. In first generation poets, we have three major writers and they are William Wordsworth, S. T. Coleridge, and Robert Southey. William Wordsworth, S. T. Coleridge, and Robert Southey. And in the second generation poets, we have P. B. Shelley, John Keats, and Lord Byron. Okay, these are the major poets of Romantic period. Uh, let me begin with the first generation poets. Okay, first generation poets are three William Wordsworth, S. T. Coleridge, and Robert Southey. The first writer that is William Wordsworth. William Wordsworth is the representative poet of Romantic period. We have studied about this. Romantic age is also called the age of Wordsworth because William Wordsworth is a representative poet in the sense he is a great poet of Romantic age. This William Wordsworth is called nature poet or he is called the priest of nature because we can see a kind of mystical attitude in the poems of William Wordsworth. William Wordsworth is rightly called a nature poet and priest of nature and he gives or he has given a definition of poetry and that is our William Wordsworth says that poetry is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings recollected in tranquility. Poetry is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings recollected in tranquility. So let me explain this or let me interpret the definition given by William Wordsworth about poetry. Or William Wordsworth defines poetry as a spontaneous overflow in a sense a continuous overflow and he says this continuous or spontaneous overflow of emotions and this should be recollected in tranquility. What, is, what does it mean? He says that the poetry has to come from the heart of the poet and there should not be a kind of force by someone or it should not come from the mind but it has to come out of his heart spontaneous overflow of what powerful feelings so we can see subjectivity uh, which is the major feature of romantic age subjectivity okay powerful feelings recollected in tranquility that means giving a form of poem to the powerful feelings or the emotions of a writer or which come spontaneously from his heart is called poetry according to William Wordsworth and 
William Wordsworth, he was influenced by French Revolution and he took the principle of liberty and he revolted against the 18th century school of poetry that is neoclassical school and he thought that it is very essential to be free or to have liberty in writing to compose or to write great poems. So we have seen about the writer here or William Wordsworth or his attitude towards nature and mysticism and the definition given by William Wordsworth. So now let us know about the poems or the poetical works written by William Wordsworth. The first poem is the prelude. The prelude is a famous poem written by William Wordsworth and it is an autobiographical work. It is an autobiographical poem written by William Wordsworth. In a sense, in this poem, he has recorded the events of his life from his childhood till the period of his maturity. That means he has written about his experience or his deeds and the events of his life. And this explanation or the description talks about or indicates or shows the feature of romantic period that is subjectivity. Okay, And this poem is addressed to his friend S.T. Coleridge, another important poet of romantic period. So, the first poem, the prelude, is an autobiographical poem which talks about the events or the incidents of the life of William Wordsworth from childhood till the period of maturity and it is addressed to his friend that is S.T. Coleridge and it is a long poem. Okay, this is about the first poem that is the prelude and second one we have the excursion. Second one is excursion. This is also a long narrative poem written by William Wordsworth and in which or in this poem we can see a kind of mystical attitude. Mystical in this is a kind of devotional attitude or mystical attitude of Wordsworth towards nature because Wordsworth worships nature. He doesn't see nature just as a background but he sees or he is able to worship or he is able to see God in it. So in this poem we can see this kind of mystical attitude of William Wordsworth towards nature. And actually William Wordsworth wanted to write a long poem or a great poem that is recluse. Recluse. He wanted to write a poem called Recluse to write about the power of nature. But unfortunately, he could not complete the poem and he was able to complete only the two parts. The uh, two parts are the first one which I explained that is prelude and excursion. These are the two parts of the poem Recluse, but he could not complete the poem recluse but here we are referring to those two poems as separate works okay the first one is the prelude and the second one is excursion and one more long poem he has written that is peter bell peter bell it is also a long narrative poem it is a tale in verse a story written in the form of a poem so this is about the long narrative poems written by William Wordsworth where we can see his attitude towards nature or his mysticism and love for nature, concern towards nature or his imagination or imaginative power or his creativity. And apart from this, he has written two great or two famous poems and they are Immortality Ode and Tintern Abbey. Immortality Ode, 
immortality ode and tintern abbey are the two great poems written by william wordsworth in which he talks about the three stages in his life in the sense his attitude towards nature how it changed from first stage to second stage and to the third stage that can be seen in the poem or these two poems tintin abbey and immortality ode and besides these we have the sonnet sequences written by william wordsworth like ecclesiastical sonnets and river dutton sonnets okay and with this we have famous sonnets like sonnet on sonnet on milton and one more very famous uh, sonnet that is the world is too much with us it is really a beautiful sonnet written by william wordsworth in which he talks about how this modern age or how the industrial revolution is affecting or how the people of modern age are neglecting nature but in reality the human beings can find happiness or human beings can forget their pains or sorrow only in midst of nature so it is a beautiful and famous sonnet written by william wordsworth that is the world is too much with us and we have other famous poems like my heart leaps up solitary reaper and very famous poem written by william wordsworth is the daffodils daffodils is a poem written by william wordsworth about small yellow flower and in the poem daffodils the subject matter or the inspiration he takes from small yellow flower but he writes a great poem that indicates his imagination power or his imaginative power and power to create the great poetry or the poem taking inspiration from nature this is how we can study about the representative poet of romantic age that is william wordsworth he is a nature poet priest of nature or mystical attitude towards nature his imagination and great poems or different varieties of poems okay and now i'm moving to the second writer the second poet that is s t coleridge samuel taylor coleridge samuel taylor coleridge is another important figure of romantic period he is a close friend of william wordsworth and actually both of them together published the lyrical ballads estee coleridge is known for the use of supernatural element in his poetry wordsworth is called nature poet and even estee coleridge is called the priest of romanticism but he is famous for the use of supernatural element so actually s t coleridge is a genius he is a genius or though he is a genius he could not complete many of his poems due to lack of will power and he has not written many poems but the poems written by s t coleridge are great this writer s t coleridge is famous for three poems and the first one is the rhyme of the ancient mariner the rhyme of the ancient mariner actually the lyrical ballads uh, begins with a poem uh, from this the rhyme of ancient mariner and the second one is cristabel and one more famous poem that is kubla khan st coleridge is famous for these three poems the first one that is the rhyme of ancient mariner in this poem we can witness or we can observe the use of supernatural element supernatural element in the sense 
or describing something or going beyond the natural elements. Here in the poem, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, the poet S.T. Coleridge narrates a story of an old mariner who describes his experience of journey and how he traveled with 200 sailors and how they could not complete or they could not continue their journey together because of a supernatural element which is used by the writer here they meet a bird called albatross the ocean and they kill the bird and because of this act of killing that bird a curse falls on them so they could not move further they stop there and sailors they die because of hunger and fortunately this old mariner is alive and he blesses the snakes and this act of virtue saves him and he is able to move further and he reaches his place and this journey or the his experience is narrated in the form of the poem that is the rhyme of ancient mariner so look at the use of the supernatural element here maybe the reference of the bird or the curse or the snakes and death and even the man who uh, who was able to uh, come back or to reach his place so this is how we can see the supernatural element in the poem that is the rhyme of ancient mariner one more poem that is written by st colrich that is cristabel cristabel is an important poem written by here st colrich Christabel is an innocent girl and a wicked power tries to effect the power or the wicked power on her but fortunately she is saved by the spirit of her dead mother the dead mother comes and saves this innocent girl cristabel here also we can see the use of supernatural element okay cristabel and one more poem that is very famous written by st colrich that is kubla khan kubla khan and it is a fragment fragment in the sense st colrich could not complete this poem actually this is a description of his dream st colrich in his dream gets a vision of a palace being built by great king called kubla khan palace of ice and so many this kind of imaginative or pictures or images can be seen and even supernatural elements can be seen in the poem and he gets the vision in his uh, dream and he gets up and he starts writing or he starts giving the form of a poem to his dream and he could write few lines but unfortunately he was disturbed by somebody and again he tries to recollect the dream and he tries to write it or he tries to complete but unfortunately he could not recollect the dream so the poem remains as a fragment he could not complete so these are the three poems written by st colrich they are the rhyme of the ancient mariner and cristabel and one more that is kubla khan and the next writer is robert sadi robert sadi is another important poet of romantic period he is also a close friend of william wordsworth and 
as T. Coleridge. They are also called lake poets. Robert Sade is actually, uh, he was a famous writer in the 19th century or during romantic period. But now or at present, uh, many of his poems are not read by the readers. But William Wordsworth and S.T. Coleridge are still famous. The poems written by them are still famous. But so now or at present, the poems are not so famous among the readers. But romantic age or during romantic period in 19th century, he was a famous writer like William Wordsworth and S.T. Coleridge. He has written many poems and even prose works too. And the important works are the epic poems, Thalaba the Destroyer, Thalaba the Destroyer and one more that is the Curse of Kehema. The Curse of Kehema. These two are the great or uh, epic poem written by Robert Sadi. And he has written one more work that is A Vision of Judgment. So besides these important work, works, he has also written lyric poems or other famous poems too. And this is about Robert Sadi. And last uh, one more writer is not a major writer and his name is Sir Walter Scott. Sir Walter Scott is a great novelist and he is famous for his historical novels but he is a minor poet. He is a minor poet Sir Walter Scott but he is a major historical novelist. The Lady of the Minstrel, The Lady of the Lake, Marmion, these are the few examples, the poems written by Sir Walter Scott. So this is about the poets of first generation, first writer William Wordsworth who is famous for the description of nature and S.T. Coleridge who is famous for the description of supernatural elements and third writer is Robert Sade. These three are the major poets and the last one is a minor poet. Sir Walter Scott. So this is about the poets of first generation.